Today, we look at surjective, injective and bijective functions. But before we do that, we need to understand what a function really is. It is a mapping from the domain, here marked in blue, to a codomain, here marked in red. This mapping is given by a function rule, here, f of x, marked in green. So what does this mean visually? So with our domain in blue here, and our codomain in red, it is a mapping from A to B. Where A and B are groups, these can be infinite or finite. Now, let's imagine we had a bunch of points in our domain and a bunch of points in our codomain. Here we have the finite case, but this can be generalised to the infinite case easily. If we imagine our function rule mapping from our domain to our codomain, where every point in our codomain is mapped to by some value in our domain, which can be written as, for all little b in our codomain, there exists a little a in our domain such that f of little a equals little b. If this is the case, we say our function is subjective. Let's now consider some examples of this. If we imagine a function from the real values to the real values, also known as the Cartesian plane, with our domain being the x-axis and our codomain being the y-axis. Now, what would a subjective function look like? If we take, for example, f of x equals 3x, which we know is subjective because if we take any value little b in our codomain, we can find a little a, i.e. little b divided by 3, which the function rule will map to b. Now, let's contemplate a non-subjective function. For example, this could be f of x equals x squared, which isn't subjective as we know any value below 0 on the codomain cannot be found by a value in the domain. Now, returning back to the diagram of our function, if we imagine the case where every single point in A is mapped to a single point in B, i.e. individual A's mapped to an individual B, which can be written as for all A1 and A2 in group A, f of A1 equals f of A2 implies that A1 equals A2. This is a definition of what it means to be injective. So this here is an injective function. Right, so going back to our Cartesian plane. If we imagine a curve like this, aka f of x equals x cubed, which we can see is injective, because taking any value of our codomain, there's only one value on our domain which will map to it using the function rule. Comparatively, f of x equals x squared is not injective, because we know multiple values in our domain will map to the same value of the codomain. For example, 4 can be mapped to from minus 2 or 2. Once again, returning back to our function diagram, we now consider the case where every single point in the domain maps to an individual point on the codomain, and every individual point in the codomain is mapped to by an individual point in the domain, which is the case when a function is both surjective and injective, then we call this a function being bijective. Now, let's look at a worked example. How do we show that f from integers to integers, given by f of x equals x plus 3, is a bijection? Well, we know that we have to show that f is surjective and injective. So let's start by recalling the definition of surjectivity. And let's apply it to our case, where the domain and codomain are both integers. So let's suppose that we have a value b that's an integer. And if we take a to equal b minus 3, which we know is also an integer, as an integer take away an integer is an integer, we see that taking our original function f of a equals b and substituting a for b minus 3, then applying the function rule just gives us b equals b. So we've shown that this function is subjective. As we have shown our function is subjective, all we need to do now is show that it is injective. So let's recall the definition of injectivity, and let's apply it to our case where the domain is just an integer. Then let's take two arbitrary a1 and a2 in the integers. We must show that f of a1 equals f of a2 can be turned into a1 equals a2, which is simple, because if we apply the functional to both sides, and take 3 away from both sides, we just have that a1 equals a2. Therefore, we have shown the function is both surjective and injective, so it must be bijective. Now, let's just consider changing the domain to the natural numbers. 
this is no longer bijective, as it isn't surjective, because we can take a number, say, 2, and there's not a number in the domain which will map to it, as this would require minus 1 to be in the domain, but minus 1 is not an element of the natural numbers. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you found it useful, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks.